Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning this morning. It's another beautiful Wednesday morning. I will give God glory for his mercies, for his faithfulness, for his goodness. Uh, let's us just share a word of prayer quickly as we go into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for keeping us from last week, even to this week. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Precious Father, thank you because the entrance of your word gives light. It gives life. It gives understanding unto the simple. Lord, even as we enter into your word this morning, Holy Spirit, I invite you, our teacher to come and teach us. Give us the light and the life that is in your word. That Father will be here as shall be doers of the word and the word in the name of Jesus. Let your light, Father, flood our life, that every darkness in our life shall be taken off by the reason of your light, for your word says that the light comes in and darkness cannot comprehend it. So Lord, we receive your light, even your life, that every darkness in our life may be torn away with darkness of unforgiveness, of bitterness, of unrighteousness, in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I pray for every Everyone came in to hear the word that Father, you will bless them in Jesus' name, amen. And once again, good morning this morning while it is morning. It's so good to be back here to share the word of God, yes. Sir. And I hope you woke up with a bright smile. Yes, I'm back with my bright smile because every day is the day that the Lord has made, and you should have a very bright smile on your face. Give it thanks to God. And there is nothing that makes the devil mad when you are with a bright smile in spite of the raging storm out there. And you put a smile knowing that the God that is with you is greater than the events and the situation on the outside. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the word gives you. So if the word cannot give you the peace that Jesus gives to you, the word cannot take it from you. Circumstances and situation cannot take your peace away. Circumstances and situation cannot take away the joy of the Lord that he has given you. For the Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 5, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So if the fruit of the Spirit, because you are a child of God, God has given you love, joy, peace. God has given you all of this and the nine beautiful gifts in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22. If you go to read, the devil, the circumstance cannot take them away. That is why you see me. I have a bright smile every morning, every day, and I give a smile unto the Lord because the joy of God in me was not given to me by my situation, neither was it given to me by anything else other than the Lord. It is the Lord that has given it, and the only one that can take it away is the Lord, or I throw it away. And you know what? I choose to hold on to the joy of the Lord. So I just want to encourage you this morning as you hear this word to be encouraged in your heart and keep on and hold on to the joy of the Lord. Amen. I believe that word was for somebody. Take it and be happy and be glad in God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, we are back again with our series of 70 times 7. And we began to talk about forgiveness on two weeks back. Yeah, and we are talking about 70 times 7. And today we'll be looking at the things that makes us angry or that makes us become unforgiving unforgiving because unforgiveness is one of the major things that is ruining the life of a believer. Unforgiveness makes you bitter. Unforgiveness keeps you in anger. All, for all, all of this, when you are not forgiven, you cannot truly carry the presence of God. It doesn't matter the manifestation on the outside. The oil is drying. Amen. So there's a need for us to understand what the word of God says about forgiveness and unforgiveness. As a child of God, you cannot carry unforgiveness in your heart because God is not carrying unforgiveness in his heart. You are a child of God. You are born of God. So today we are going to look at those things that do not permit us to forgive. But before then, I would like to read our verses from the book of Matthew chapter 6. I will always read that verse to us to remind us of the vital need to walk in forgiveness. Amen. Matthew chapter 6. And of course, I will be reading from the verse 9. And of course, our verse is always verse 12. So I read Matthew 6. says, And in this manner, therefore, pray from verse 9. 
And in this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Another version says, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Another one says, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I want to read that verse 12 from the from the uh, uh, message translation. It says, uh, uh, keep us forgiving with you and forgiving others. That is, we should, God should help us. You know, he said, God should forgive us and keep us forgiving. You know, and then we also should keep on forgiving others. So that means that for God to keep us in forgiveness, we have to keep forgiving others. The contemporary English version puts it this way. You know, I like to try to read from as many versions to give us better understanding, you know, as much as possible. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, in the contemporary English version, which says, it says this, put it this way, verse 12, there you are. Forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. And like I always say, it means that God should forgive us in the same manner, with the same yardstick and conditions, if any, that we forgive others. Because God forgiving us is based on our forgiving others. If we read verse 14 and 15, verses 14 and 15 of that says, chapter says, For if this is Jesus speaking, it is not any other man, it is not Apostle Paul or something. This is Jesus Christ himself speaking he said for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive men their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses so if you refuse to release forgiveness to anybody know that God is not going to release forgiveness to you it doesn't matter how you plead and cry for it the Bible says here that if you forgive you will be forgiven if you do not forgive you will not be forgiven verse uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 2 of uh, uh, Matthew chapter 7 says uh, with the same measure, with the same amount, the same way with which you give to others, it shall be given unto you so how important is forgiveness to our lives you know how come we end up in unforgiveness? I remember when I gave my life to Christ, one of the first things I had to ask the Lord was that the Lord should teach me to forgive anybody of any offense that they commit against me. It doesn't matter how much it hurts. It doesn't matter how much it sinks into the heart, how much it stabs. I say, Lord, give me, help me to forgive and to love in spite of what has been done. Help me to forgive, to throw, give me that power of compassion and mercy that I'll be able to forgive no matter what. And by the grace of God, God has been helping me. Of course, there are people that have taken advantage of it. They say, oh, you are weakly, you are this, you do, you don't know how to, you are not strong and all of those stuff. But you know what? It doesn't matter to me because when you're able to forgive, it means that you have submitted your will to God. Because the truth is this, why do we get angry? What actually makes a man angry? I have discovered and check it out until your ego is touched. You are not offended. Nothing offends a man or keeps a man in unforgiveness until the ego or is it ego or ego is touched, meaning the pride, the pride of life. So if you look at it, the things that this the things that you say, I cannot forgive. If you go to search your pride, the very pride, the pride of self, the self in you has been touched. That you say, can you imagine me? Can you imagine? You don't want people, you see people say, the person they told me, I mean, it is the you that has been touched. And that you is your pride. And until your pride is touched, a man will not live in anger. Because he can do away with it. But when the pride, I say, my pride. But the Bible says we should humble ourselves before God. He said, for God resisted the proud. Do away with that pride. Let your pride be the Lord Jesus. So that you can forgive. How would you feel when the Lord will tell you that he will not forgive you? 
we never thought about it. But we should think about it. Now, remember our story, the young man that was forgiving his sins in the book, we read it from the book of uh, Luke chapter 7, uh, Matthew chapter 18, if you read from verse 21. When Peter was asking Jesus, how many times should my brother offend me that I will forgive him and then I don't need to forgive him anymore? To what extent, at what point in time should I not forgive? Whether the person asks for forgiveness or not. And Jesus says, 70 times 7. And of course you and I know that nobody will offend you 70 times, 7 times in a day of the same offense repeating it. Are you stick and come throughout the day with the person? It's not possible. So if the Lord is saying that we should forgive a person of a sin 490 times in a day, it is because he knows that we can do it. Why? Because the Lord has commanded us to put on powers of compassion. God carries compassion in him. And because we are born of God, we carry compassion in us. We carry powers of mercy in us. So we can give out mercy. Because when we go to God, when we have offended God, the first thing we cry out for is, Lord, have mercy upon me. Now, I want you to hear the person that has forgiven you saying, have mercy upon me, sister. Have mercy upon me, brother. Forgive me my sins. And you say, the person did they ask, how about you releasing mercy? even though the person does not merit it. Remember, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Come on, don't tell me you are not God. I will read something to you. The Bible says, for ye are gods, but ye shall die like men. men. You are a child of God, born of God, not of man. And so you can live the life of God. You can act the life of God. You can execute, you can live your life the way God wants you to live. Now, you can actually walk like God because that is the work that God has called us to live. Now, if you read uh, uh, Psalm 82 verse 6, it says, I said you are gods and all of you children of the Most High. Say, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of the princes. What does that mean? That we have been born of God. We can actually live like God on earth. We have authority. We have power, especially in the name of Jesus. We've got the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, we can forgive. In the name of Jesus, we can show mercy. In the name of Jesus, we can show love. And do you know that you cannot really love somebody you have not forgiven? You can't say, I love everybody, I love everyone, and yet you are keeping on forgiveness in your heart. Do you know that you're actually keeping people in prison, when in prison in your heart, when you refuse to forgive them? So what are the things that, that fuel unforgiveness? Anger is one of them. And what does the Lord say about anger? You know, I was going through Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. Where the Bible says very clearly, said that, let me just read it out to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9 says, Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Everything makes you angry. Every little thing you get offended. Every little thing you get angry. How can that person talk to me like that? It's not your fault. How can this person do this? It's not their fault. How can this person... Hey, calm down. The Bible says that anger rests in the bosom of fools. So do not keep anger in your bosom. Take it and throw it away. You see how? Because the Bible says that you must do away you, not God. You must do away with anger. You must eliminate it. You must throw it away. Take it and throw it away. You don't know how? Ask the Lord to help you. As long as you are willing to let that anger go, as long as you are willing to throw it away, the Lord will show you how you can throw it away. Because how I can throw it away may not be the same you can do it. But the Bible commands us, you and I, to throw anger away. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 says now, it says, it says, but now you yourselves, are to put off all of this. He didn't say you are to pray it off. He didn't say you are to ask God to take it off. He said, but you yourself, now you are to put off all of this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. You are to put it, how do you do? You take it and you put it away. You take it and you throw it away. So it is you and I that are to do away with anger. You know, how 
One way is to remember that anger rests in the bosom of fools. And you are not a fool, you are a child of God. And because you are a child of God, you do not allow anger to rest inside of you. You do not allow, you don't carry anger as pregnancy. You don't carry offense. Don't carry the offense. Don't have a black or a red or blue book where you keep offenses. This person did to you yesterday. Or, I'm a slow reactor. I may take time to, you may offend me or do something very offensive. And I will not be, I was not, that was not so nice. And I'll come to, but it's gone. I do not hold it against you. Because the Lord has helped me over the years. To release forgiveness. And do you know how you know that you have forgiven when you can talk about the matter? Smile and there is no itching inside of you. There is no mm, mm. once there is something, there is still a but. Know that you have not forgiven. So the Bible says you should put away anger. Then I hear somebody say that, but the Bible says we should be angry and not sin. Yes, be angry and say not. And to be angry in itself. It's not wrong, but it is to keep anger that is the problem. Because how do you, it says, be angry and say not. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Now, somebody offended you yesterday. You are still offended today. Has the sun not gone down already on your anger? Even if the person offended you in the, the sun has gone down on your anger. Brother, sister, let go. You are a child of God. And then you hear some people say, no, 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 bitterness, do not allow. Because when you keep anger, with time it matures into bitterness. Because you are expecting the person to come and say sorry. The person is not saying sorry. So you continue to brood on the anger, on the offense that the person has committed. You continue to brood over it and you just brood until you are so full. You cannot even stand the sight of the person. And you are a child of God, come on. How would you feel you have committed? They sin against God, and God is busy. And do you know what the Bible says that God is of only eyes and He cannot behold sin, yet He still have mercy upon you. We were born and conceived in sin. By the mercies of God, you are I and not consumed. So, what is it? Allow God's love to shine through you, allow God's love to shine through you. I will read once more Ephesians chapter 4. And then I'll round up on this for today. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. Quickly, I'll quickly read that to us. Ephesians chapter 4. And, and I think that's what we have what I'll be saying about. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. If 26, verse 26 says, uh, let me read from verse 25. This is lovely. It says, therefore, just like in Colossians we read. He said, therefore put away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another. Be angry. In fact, it is like a commandment. Be angry and do not sin. Which is almost impossible. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. Be angry if you must be angry. Be angry. It is okay when you are angry. It is okay when you, 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 you offend, when you feel offended. But do not sin. Now the question is, how do I get angry and not sin? How do I get offended and I do not sin? Mind your words. Mind the words that comes out of your mouth. Because once they fall, you may not be able to collect it back. It's not you made, you will not be able. Words are like water that once they are spilled, there's no way you are going to get that water back. And even if you try, you will never get that quantity of water back. So let us be mindful of our language. That way we are able to guard our heart with all diligence. And then the things that come out that affect us, that keeps us in anger, we will be able to deal with them. And then if we remember and we keep the word of God in our heart, the psalmist says, that word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Take 
let the word of God hide it in your heart. Let the word of God guide you so that when anger comes, you remember, oh, anger rests, anger dwells, anger sleeps in the bosom of fools. I am a child of God, I'm not a fool. Then you take the anger and you throw it away. Unforgiveness is not of God. God is a forgiving God. And you remember that if you do not forgive, God will not forgive you. Please release forgiveness because when you forgive, you are actually releasing those that you are keeping in the prison of your heart of unforgiveness. And I pray this morning that the grace to forgive, that the strength to forgive, that the compassion, the love of God to forgive will be released upon you in the name of Jesus. And if you are out there, you are in bitterness of soul. You are angry because somebody has done something that you feel the person should not do. And the truth is this, only those you love can actually hurt you. Now release forgiveness. If you are out there, there's somebody you feel that has hurt you so much and you cannot forgive, I pray plead with you by the message of God today, release forgiveness. Because the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 and 15, if you forgive, you shall be forgiven. If you do not forgive, you shall not be forgiven. It did not give condition whether the person has done right or wrong. It is talking about you and that means you have to look at yourself, not at the other. And I pray by the message of God that you'll be able to do this in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you're out there, you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you may be finding it even doubly difficult to forgive. But I just want you, why don't you just pray this prayer with me today? You have heard the word of God and received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Join me as you pray this prayer and pray it sincerely from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I come to you. I ask for you to forgive my sins. That before now, I have lived my life without you. Lord Jesus, I don't want to live without you. I recognize that you are the son of the living God. Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. That from today, you are the only one I will serve. And thank you for the grace to live right and to serve you. Amen. And if you pray that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. For Jesus loves you. He died for you. And you've done the greatest thing that you can ever do for yourself. You are surrendering your life and your heart to Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, I just want to thank you for your word that has come forth. I thank you for as many as came into this word today, Lord God. I pray that your word will minister life to the hearers, O oh God. And I pray, Lord God, that grace to forgive and to live right, O oh God, be released upon all in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for the ones that have given their life to Christ. That, Father, I see their salvation with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And if you do enjoy the message, Please share it with others. I believe this is so vital. It's not just believing. I know it is so vital for us to live in forgiveness. It is so vital for us to give forgive, forgiveness out. So share with your friends uh, this word, this message, and let them to be blessed. Let them begin to be released from anger and from bitterness in Jesus' name. Until we see you again, God bless you. Thank you. Amen. <music>